Scripture says, redeeming the times, for the days are evil. And so if you see us stepping up the production of, of messages, of videos, that's because time is running out. And what we do, we must do quickly. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I have two messages I want to share, and so I'm going to share this message, but I still want to share another message that will be uploaded later this evening dealing with a sadistic society and how we are coming into a sadistic time. And there is an example in the scripture of it. But before we get into that, I want to share a message I think is very important for God's people to understand. Earlier today, I was talking to you about the difference between the church and the body of Christ. And this can get confusing because even the scripture calls the body of Christ the church. Paul called the church the body of Christ. But let me say this to you. The church cannot be the body of Christ without being filled with the Holy Spirit. However, the body of Christ is still part of the church. Does that make sense? And you're going to learn that in the scripture in this lesson. We begin with Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, if you'd like to follow in the reading of God's word. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and in, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Now notice in this phrase, he is before all things, and by him all things consist, he is the head of the body, comma, the church. So this is where it could get confusing to people to think that the church is the body of Christ. I want to prove to you from the scriptures that this is simply not the case. Just because you're in the church does not mean you're in the body of Christ. There's a difference between the church and the body of Christ. Amen. Just because you're saved and go to church uh, and read your Bible and pray does not mean you're part of the body of Christ. Amen. That's, that's a realm in the spirit. That's the spirit realm. That's not the physical realm. The church is in the physical realm. Are you listening? But the body of Christ is in the spiritual realm, if that makes sense to you. Let's open in prayer. Father in heaven, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for your word. We thank you for truth. We thank you for your people. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that we have in this hour to share truth, to feed the flock that you've given us the oversight of. Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless and anoint, Lord, this word, and bless and anoint your people to receive this word, that you'll open their understanding, Lord, as the scriptures are open to them. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we see in this verse 
that the head of the body is Jesus Christ. And here we see the body, the church. Okay? But you don't see in this verse, and he is the head of the church, comma, the body. You don't see that. But what you do see is he is the head of the body, comma, the church. There's a reason for that. Amen? And that's what we're going to learn. We've got a lot of verses of Scripture to go through here. So buckle your seatbelt. Get ready. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body, not the church, but as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Now listen. This is how you are become part of the body of Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have made, been made all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Do you see how you enter the body of Christ? Baptized. You must be baptized, not in water, but baptized in the Holy Ghost to be in the body of Christ. That's very plain here in 1 Corinthians. Paul makes that very plain to the degree that he says, We've been made to drink into one spirit. Remember, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are athirst, and drink of the water of life. Now this he spake of the spirit, which had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So we understand that this living water, that the spirit must be received by being to drink in the Spirit. You're filled with the Spirit. As you drink in the Spirit, as you're filled with the Spirit, you're baptized in the Spirit into the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I may know that. So now let's take a look at Romans chapter 12, verse 4. For as many as have, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Be listening having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry, let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching. Are you listening? He's not talking about babes, not talking about the carnal that are in the church talking about spiritual people that have been baptized by the Holy Ghost and they're in the body of Christ. You won't operate in the gifts of the Spirit and the operation of the Spirit if you're just saved and you're just in the church. Amen. This is spiritual. Not everybody is spiritual. Paul was speaking to the carnal uh, babes in Christ and he said, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common. 
and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. This is after Pentecost. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Listen. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Listen. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Does it say he added to the body of Christ? No. It says he added to the church. Amen. Those that were being saved were not being added to the body of Christ because you must be baptized in the Holy Ghost if you're going to be in the body of Christ. So they were added to the church. There's a big difference. Huge difference. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar. So here we see It being said again, we are one body. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So even as the first Adam had a body, as I shared with you in the message about the rib coming out of Adam, so the last Adam, Christ, has a body, a spiritual body, and he's going to have a spiritual bride. Are you listening? That's going to come out of his spiritual body. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, not the same church, but the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Notice he says there's one body, one spirit. He didn't say there's one church. And one spirit. How many know the book of Ephesians is not to the carnal minded? It's not to the babes in Christ. The book of Ephesians is strong meat for the spiritual man. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, in Ephesians chapter 12, or chapter 4, verse 12, he gave some gifts to the body of Christ for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the church of Christ. Is that what it says? No, it says for the edifying of the body of Christ. Those that make up the spiritual body of Christ. This is not the carnal. This is not those that are babes and children in the church. This is talking about spiritual. Those that are part of the body of Christ. Amen. He's not talking to babes here in this verse. You think this is a message to babes? Till we all come into the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man? 
You think that's a message for babes? I think not. So we all come to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. Notice what he says in the next verse. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. He's not talking about babes or children here. He's talking about those that have matured. And he's encouraging the children to grow up. Amen. He's not finished talking now. Let's listen. He's still teaching. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. For, listen to this, from whom the whole body, not the church, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The body. In that one verse, we see the body twice. From whom the whole body fitly joined together, and then we see that maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Remember what Adam said? Eve is now flat, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Here you have the last Adam saying, these are members of my body that are my flesh and my bone. Are you listening? It's talking about spiritually. It's not talking about physically. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. They two shall be one flesh. He's talking about a spiritual union here. Describing it by the physical union of Adam and Eve. Amen. And then he goes on to say, <clears throat> this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. No, Paul, you don't. You speak concerning Christ and the body of Christ. The body. I'm not talking about the church. It's talking about the body. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. How can he be speaking to babes? How can he be speaking to the colonel? He's not speaking to the church. He's speaking to the body of Christ. Now, if there's somebody in the church that has ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, amen. I'm going to tell you, folks, there were times Paul the Apostle got mixed up. That might offend you, but it's true. He was trying to convey revelation. He was trying to understand it himself. He, it may even look like he's contradicting himself, but he's not. He just doesn't understand what he's saying. Amen. Many times in the Old Testament, the prophets said things that they didn't understand what they were saying, but that in the New Testament, God would give insight to the apostles to understand what the, what the prophets were saying. Same thing with the apostles. They were given things. John was giving things. Amen. In the spirit about the day of the Lord. And we read in the book of Revelation things John didn't even understand, but that God is giving you and I insight and understanding into in this hour, hallelujah, things that God told John, seal it up, told Daniel, seal it up. God does not give one man at all. He doesn't give him the whole thing. We're all many members.
members of one body, that God will be glorified, not a man. Many times Paul received revelations he didn't understand. That's why you and I must depend upon the Holy Spirit in this hour to lead and guide us into all truth. We have a basic outline here. We have a pattern, praise God. You and I have the inspired record, glory to God. But more than that, we have the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. The Spirit of truth, hallelujah, to lead and guide us into all truth. Amen. The Holy Spirit will never contradict what's already been written, but he'll give us more insight, more understanding. Amen. We see in the scripture where Paul was talking about how he had not yet attained to be imperfect. But right after that, he says, as many of us that be perfect. Paul, what happened? You just got done saying you hadn't attained. Now you turn around and say you have attained. Which is it? He's trying to understand it, people. You and I have finite minds. You and I are men. Listen to me. We're dealing with a God that's a spirit. Hallelujah. And we need to receive and understand revelation that God would have us to understand. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be his name. Acts chapter 2, verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved, not added to the body of Christ. He added to the church. Acts chapter 5, verse 11. Listen. And great fear came upon all the church How many know it's the apostles that are in the body of Christ in this verse of scripture? But great fear came upon all the church, the called out, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles, the apostles are in the body of Christ. Are you listening? Were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Amen. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church, in the wilderness, even in the Old Testament. Israel was concerned, it was considered God's church, not the body of Christ, the church. He called them out of Egypt. The word church means called out ecclesia many are called but few are chosen those that are chosen are not in just the church they're in the body the body of christ so even in the old testament god considered israel to be his church amen acts chapter 8 verse 1 and saul was consenting unto stephen's death And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. Not the body of Christ only, the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. Isn't that interesting? The apostles are in the body of Christ and they're not scattered like the church is. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. The apostles are filled with the Spirit. They've been baptized in the Holy Ghost in the upper room. And they're not being scattered like the church that's not filled with the Holy Ghost. They've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. John said, Jesus would baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Not everybody that is saved today that's in the church has been baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. How many know that? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 8, verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Not the body of Christ, the church. Entering into every house and hauling men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that 
were scattered. Here it is again, scattered abroad, went everywhere preaching the word. Big difference in the apostles, eh? amen? Big difference, those that are in the body of Christ. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Amen. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. It's not talking about the body of Christ, it's talking about the church. It's much different to be in the body of Christ than to just be in the church, folks. You're in the body of Christ. You've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. You have something that gives you the power to stand. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church. Not of the body of Christ, but the church. Now, there could have been some in the body of Christ in that, in that group of people that were praying for him. But here, the emphasis is on the church, which means even the saved, those that weren't filled with the Spirit, were also praying. Amen? Praying unto God for him. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 14, verse 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, all the believers, not just those in the body of Christ filled with the Holy Spirit, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. See, Brother Joseph's not commissioned just to feed just the body of Christ, but to feed the church of God. Babes, children, all the way up to sons fully developed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Glory to his name. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Last but not least. And unto the angel of the church. Does it say the body of the Laodiceans? Does it say the body of the lukewarm? It's talking about those that aren't, are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because you're not cold or hot. He's talking to the church. Amen. He's talking to those that are not on fire for the Lord. He's not talking to the spirit filled, those that are strong in the Lord. He's talking to those that are lukewarm. Praise the Lord. And I believe there's a lot of my listeners, many of you out there, that have yet to be filled with the Holy Ghost, yet to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You think you're part of the body of Christ. You, un you don't understand why does it seem like there seems to be such a disconnect from me and the rest of the church or the rest of the body, I should say, the rest of the Lord's people. It's because you haven't been filled with the Spirit yet. Amen. No matter how much you learn from the word of God until you're filled with the spirit, you'll never be in the body of Christ. Never. Amen. You've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost if you're going to be in the body of the last Adam. If you're going to be in his body. Amen. You've got to be filled with the spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I hope you understand. God bless you.